Hello everyone, this is Mital Kush. Today we will discuss the chapter 2, that is motion along a straight line. First, let me outline the topics we will discuss today. Position and displacement, average velocity and speed, instantaneous velocity and speed, acceleration, one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration and free-fall acceleration. The branch of physics describing the motion of bodies without considering the causes of the motion is called kinematics. In this chapter, we study only one-dimensional motion. That is, we consider the motion of bodies along a straight line. This line might be horizontal, vertical, or even slanted, but it will always be straight in this chapter. Later on, we will discuss two- and three-dimensional motions, which all depend on a solid understanding of the basic concepts of one-dimensional motion. They are displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Objects in this chapter will be considered as particles. A particle might be point-like, such as a small bead, or it might be a rigid body, like a car, whose every point moves in the same direction, at the same rate, that is, it moves like a particle. Consider an object which undergoes a one-dimensional motion along the x-axis shown in this figure. The position of the object is given by its x-coordinate with respect to the origin. Then, if the object is said to be located at x equals 2 meter, we understand it is 2 meter in the positive direction from the origin. If it is at x equal minus 3 meter, this time it is 3 meter in the negative direction from the origin. The change in the position of the object is called displacement delta x, which is given by this formula. And it is measured in meters because it is the difference between the positions. Here, x1 is the position of the objects at time t1, and x2 at a later time t2. The displacement of an object may be negative, positive, or zero. In other words, displacement is actually a vector quantity which has both magnitude and direction. For one-dimensional motion, we do not, however, need to use the vector properties of displacement. Plus and minus signs will be sufficient. We will usually show the time-dependent position x of t of an object as a position versus time graph, as shown in this figure. The average velocity gives us a raw estimate of how fast an object undergoes a displacement over a definite time interval, which is defined as delta x over delta t, that is x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1, and it is measured in meter per second. As you can see in this figure, average velocity is the slope of the line passing through the points t1, x1, and t2, x2. As a result, we can extend the preceding equation as the tangent theta of this line. Closer look shows that the ratio of the corresponding perpendicular edges of this right triangle gives the tangent theta 
that is the average velocity another important quantity is the average speed and it is defined as the ratio of the total distance covered by an object to the time interval delta t you see it is also measured in meter per second note that since the total distance is always a positive quantity so is the average speed in other words C average does not have direction so that it is not a vector quantity instantaneous velocity V of T O an object gives us the information about how fast it is at any given instant t it is the limiting value of the average velocity as delta t goes to zero at that instant which is shown by this formula then again it is measured in meter per second therefore v of t is the time derivative of position x of t that is v of t is the rate at which the position x of t changes with time at any given instant it is very important to note that v of t equals the slope of x t curve at any given instant as shown in this figure if this slope is positive at any instant we say that it is moving to the right at that instant the magnitude or absolute value of the velocity is called speed as it should be obvious now that velocity is another vector quantity with its magnitude and direction if the velocity of an object changes with time we say that the object accelerates and the rate at which its velocity changes is called its acceleration let the object have velocity v1 at time t1 and velocity v2 at a later time t2 then its average acceleration is defined by this formula delta v over delta t here delta v is v2 minus v1 and delta t is the t2 minus t1 as we did in defining instantaneous velocity we define the instantaneous acceleration of an object at any given time as the limit as delta t goes to zero of the average acceleration then the result is the dv over dt so it is the time derivative of velocity and it is measured in meter per second square the acceleration a of t of an object gives the information about how fast its velocity is changing at any given instant t in other words the slope of v of t at any point gives the acceleration of the object at that point a closer look at its definition acceleration is the second derivative of displacement so a of t is the dv over dt and v is the dx over dt so the result is the second derivative of the position with respect to t since acceleration is such a quantity that has both magnitude and direction acceleration is also yet another vector quantity just like displacement and velocity in this figure we show successively the curves of the acceleration velocity and displacement of an object as an example you should note how the velocity curve is obtained from the displacement curve and the acceleration curve from the velocity curve or vice versa the velocity curve can be obtained from the acceleration curve and the displacement curve can be obtained from the velocity curve sometimes in some texts 
including our textbook, the word deceleration is used when an object is slowing down, that is, when its acceleration is negative. It is important to notice that a negative acceleration does not necessarily convey the meaning slowing down. If the initial velocity and acceleration of an object are both negative, the object speeds up towards negative direction. We can draw a more general conclusion. Whenever acceleration and velocity have the same sign, say plus plus or minus minus, the object under question speeds up for all time. Whenever they have opposite signs, the object first slows down, then stops momentarily and speeds up towards the opposite direction. Sometimes we will express accelerations with large values in terms of the so-called G units. It has the value 9.8 meter per second square. The meaning of this constant will be clear shortly. In many data life problems, the object under question moves with constant acceleration or its acceleration can be assumed to be approximately constant. This figure shows successively the curves of acceleration, velocity, and position for an object moving with positive constant acceleration. In the following, we will derive some formula that can be employed in solving one-dimensional problems involving constant acceleration. As we discussed earlier, an expression for position can be obtained from velocity, since velocity is the first time derivative of position. However, we do not know V yet. As in the case of position, we use the fact that acceleration is the first time derivative of velocity to find an expression for velocity. Then we multiply both sides of this equation by dt to get rid of differential equation. Now we integrate both sides in the interval 0 to t and v0 vt respectively. In the right hand side things are different and we take a out of the integral sign since it is a constant. Therefore integration applies only on time by the same way as in this case and we obtain this result. Now we substitute these values into v and subtract them to get v minus v naught. Here we use the fundamental law of calculus, that is, integral of differential of any function is nothing but the function itself with appropriate endpoints. Then this becomes t minus zero, which is actually t. Finally, by taking this to the right hand side, by changing its sign, we get v equals v naught plus a times t. Now it is time to find x as a function of t using this result. Using the equation v equals dx over dt, we multiply both sides by dt and obtain dx equals v dt. Integrating both sides with appropriate endpoints, that is here, the initial time is zero and the corresponding position is x naught, and the final time t 
corresponding to the final position x of t. The left hand side is nothing but x between the endpoints. However, the right hand side deserves much attention since this integrand contains t explicitly. This integral can also be written as the sum of these integrals. Now, here again a is constant and it can be taken outside the integral. Remember that integral of power parameters is the inverse operation of derivative of parameters with power n. Since the first derivative of t to the power n is n times t to the power n minus 1, then integral of t to the power n should be t to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Check that the derivative of this gives t itself. Anyway, the integral of t is then t squared over 2 with corresponding integral limits 0 and t. So the result is t squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2 that is t squared over 2. And for this integral we take v naught out of the integral sign because it is a constant. Next the integral of dt is t with appropriate endpoints 0 and t. Finally, combining these results, we get an expression for x as a function of t as x equals x naught plus v naught t plus 1 over 2 times a t squared. Now we discuss the very famous example of constant acceleration, free fall acceleration. If an object is thrown up or down along a vertical axis near the surface of the earth, we see that it gravitates always towards the earth because of the downward gravitational force. Neglecting the effects of the air, the object is seen to accelerate downward at a constant rate which is called the free fall acceleration or equivalently gravitational acceleration. We will use the letter G for the magnitude of this acceleration. It is an empirical fact that the free fall acceleration G of an object does not depend on its specific characteristics. That is to say all objects undergo the very same downward acceleration. Although the value of g changes a little with altitude and latitude, its value near the surface of the earth is almost constant and given as 9.80 meter per second square. Since the free fall acceleration is constant, all of the formula for constant acceleration that we derived earlier apply also to free fall near the surface of the earth. For this we shall label the vertical axis, the y-axis, with its upward positive direction. With this choice we shall take the downward acceleration to be a as minus g in our formula. As a result we obtain the following formula for free fall. A is minus g, V is V naught minus g t, Y is Y naught plus V naught t minus 1 over 2 g t squared. N V squared is V naught squared minus 2 g times 
y minus y naught. The following consideration might be useful. If an object, initially at rest, is dropped off an elevation of h, n hits the ground in time t, it is easy to show that h is 1 over 2 g t squared. Finally, in all the problems and examples that will be presented in the video sections and that will be studied in the class, we shall always neglect the effects of air. Okay then, this is the end of the second chapter.